Number five, or fish. Coming in at the number five spot is this terrifying 16 foot long monstrosity hauled out of the ocean by Chilean fishermen. Shocking those who learned, like me, that fish can be five meters long sometimes. The clip was posted to TikTok where it went viral almost immediately, sweeping up 10 million views pretty quickly. Most people worried this fish might be a bringer of bad times, and there might be an inkling of truth to that. This fish, called an oarfish, is thought in some cultures to be an omen of impending bad fortune. I mean, I understand it completely. If, if I picked this thing out of the water, I would not think that I had been blessed by good fortune. In Japanese folklore, this fish is sometimes referred to as Ryogo no Tsukai, translating to the messenger from the sea god's palace, and I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation. I'm so very sorry. It's linked to the legend of Namazu, a giant sea snake which caused earthquakes whenever it would rise. Or fish live deep, deep, deep in the depths of the sea. And some scientists theorize that they only ever rise nearer to surface level whenever there's a disturbance in the tectonic plates, which would definitely make this fish a bad omen and a bringer of earthquakes. Now the actual ore fish, once you get aside all the legend, terrifying as it might look, is a bit of a gentle giant. It's the largest bony fish in the world, and it isn't much of a predator, preferring to swim around just hoovering up plankton. They barely even have teeth, to be honest, and they don't really pose a threat to humans. Unless you consider scaring the heck out of you a threat. You want to watch more scary sea creature videos? Well, I got great news for you because we have loads upon loads on the channel. Number four, green-eyed shark. Now, if the ocean is where all the scariest stuff in the world is hiding, that goes triple for any body of water around Australia, which is home to some of the actual most terrifying entities ever to walk the planet and swim the planet and fly the planet. It's where they send the animals that are too hardcore for the rest of the world. An Australian angler, Trapman Bermagee, pulled out this disgusting wretch of a fish some 2,000 feet beneath the sea. He captioned it, the face of a deep sea rough skinned shark. Now, a little bit of a fake Australian accent there, I, I can't help it. Unsurprisingly, most commenters wanted to point out how disgusting the thing was, which is very similar to what I'm doing now. Now, usually I'm a sucker for green eyes, but not on this leathery little monster. This thing looks like a baseball glove that came to life. I, I'm not having it. There's actually a lot of debate as to what this little thing is. Some commenters had suggested that it was a cookie cutter shark, which might sound adorable when you hear that. That sounds pretty cute, but I promise you it is not cute at all. A cookie cutter shark is named that because of its jagged mouth, which leaves cookie cutter like imprints on its victims, just like big holes in anything that it's biting at. However, the fisherman pointed out this wasn't a cookie cutter shark. A cookie cutter shark looks absolutely vile, but in a very different way. A cookie cutter shark looks more like a mole rat that was left in the sun for a few weeks, whereas this thing looks like it was grilled before ever being born. Now, another commenter suggested that this shark could be something called an Endeavor Spur Dog Shark, which is a mouthful and a half. Now, whatever the creature is, it goes without saying, I want very little to do with this shark. Number three, long-nosed chimera. You wouldn't really expect anything horrifying to exist in Newfoundland. It's a very pleasant place. You think it's mostly just chips and jigs dinner all the way down. Well, for Gary Goodyear, a fisherman out of Templeman, Newfoundland, he pulled this long-nosed chimera out of the water and gave himself quite the shock. His nets went some 2,000 feet down into the water where he unearthed this long beaked mystery fish. When he pulled it up, the crew could not believe what they had seen. It was not at all what they were expecting. I have to include this quote from one of the articles because it's just, it's too newfy not to include. Goodyear said, We're hauling away and by and by I seen this coming around the roller. I said, good God, what in the heck is that? Now when he first pulled it up, he wondered at first if it might have been a platypus because of the impressive snoot on the beast. He described this pelagic nightmare's beak as being very rubbery, like cartilage. No one on the boat had any idea what they had found, so they kept the body of the fish and took it to a local fishery in the hopes that someone could properly ID their mystery monster. Luckily, somebody actually knew and it got correctly identified as a long-nosed chimera an ancient deep sea dwelling fish famous for its green eyes and putting this gently, its monstrous appearance. The reason that its nose felt like cartilage is because the fish is completely cartilage from nose to tail. It's actually boneless. So this fish is a spineless coward. The creature most likely perished as it was being pulled up. An extreme pressure change from being 2,000 feet beneath the sea gave it a serious case of the bends. Maybe was a blessing in disguise because I'm not sure I'd want to see this thing alive. I'm not sure I'd want to see it thrashing around on the floor of a commercial fishing boat. I think that wouldn't be good for anybody. Number two, decorator crab. 
Our next spot comes to us all the way from Thailand. Some local fishermen in Koh Yao Noi pulled up their nets while fishing for crabs and discovered they'd brought up an alien looking creature with them that mystified them. They couldn't identify this thing. Take a look at this creepy little crawly. Kind of looks like a spider that's got a good fashion sense, got really into accessorizing. But it almost kind of looks like it shouldn't be moving at all. Like it's just some garbage that got cursed into being alive or maybe some seaweed that developed sentience. The fishermen were understandably pretty puzzled by this thing, so they decided to post a video of the then unidentified critter hoping to get some answers, and for once, the internet was actually helpful. The creature was correctly identified as a decorator crab, which is not something I'd heard of before this video, but I am so glad I learned about it, and I am even happier that I can pass it on to you. A decorator crab gets its name for its habit of using whatever it can scavenge around its environment to make into camouflage from predators. Now the really cool thing is that they'll use literally anything they can find. Debris, garbage, they'll even use little bits of other animals in a gruesome manner like fins or parts of a crab shell. If it can be attached to it in some way, a decorator crab will stick it to itself. They're covered in tiny velcro like hairs that allow them to attach their findings easily. I, I would love having that, it would save me so much time getting dressed. They've been recorded chewing on things like kelp or seaweed to break them down into more easily attachable accessories. Now most of the creatures on this list have been weird and scary and kind of look horrifying and I'm not gonna lie, the decorator crab kind of looks pretty scary too, but I absolutely adore the decorator crab. It is showing up every other creature in the ocean when it comes to outfits. I love the garbage costume. It's given camp in a very good way. This thing is like a crab lady gaga and I love it. Number one, ghost shark. Roman Fedortsov routinely entertains his 600,000 Instagram followers with pictures of all the strange creatures he fishes up while sailing around Murmansk, a port city in Russia. His Instagram is a treasure trove of scary undersea finds, and I absolutely recommend that you toss him a follow if you're into this sort of thing, as he's kind of the head honcho for it. This video could easily just have been five things that he fished out himself. He, like, nobody is pulling out weird things the way Roman is. But with so many to choose from, I had a tough time, but I landed on this here fish, sometimes called Frankenstein's fish. Due to the stitches all over its body looking like it's been sewn together from the bodies of several other fishes. It's also been referred to as a rat fish, a ghost shark, a spook fish, but officially they're known as ghost chimeras. I like that it's got nothing but scary nicknames. These things are bad news from teeth to tail. They have a spiny dorsal fin that's poisonous to the touch. It's got a mouth of rat-like teeth that helps it grind down anything it catches, crushing its prey in its jaws. Usually goes after things like crabs or prawns, so the rat teeth help pulverize the shells. These little things also have an inherent ability to detect the electric fields produced by other creatures, and I wish I knew even the littlest bit about biology because this fish sounds like it's magic. Fish also sounds overpowered, not gonna lie. Now I think it's a little treat. We ought to have a little slideshow at the end of just a bunch of Fedortsov's weirdest catches and I'll just react to them. Ready? Okay, here we go, lightning round. Who would make this? Why would a creature evolve like this? I guarantee you this thing looks cuter as sashimi. That, that is a face not even Mother Nature could love, if that even is a face. You know what, this one, I'm actually kind of coming around to. I wouldn't touch it, I wouldn't order it, but I kind of like it. Number five on this list is the Tiger Shark Detective. I've named this the Tiger Shark Detective because the catching of this shark actually played a crucial role in a murder mystery. It all started when two fishermen back in 1935 caught a tiger shark off the coast of Australia. They brought the shark back to shore and donated it to an aquarium. This shark was in the local news at this point and had quite the name for itself. A week into it being at this aquarium during a live feeding where there was actual literal onlookers watching, this shark coughed up what looked to be a human arm. The police obviously got involved at this point and had to do some investigating to see how it got there. They determined through a series of tests that the arm had not been bitten off by the shark, but that it had been chopped off by something else and that the shark had swallowed it whole. The story would have been over, but the arm had something on it that distinguished it from other arms. It had a tattoo. This was a rare tattoo, and back then, tattoos themselves were pretty rare altogether. Investigators soon realized that it was the same tattoo that a former police informant had on his arm, Jim Smith. He had gone missing a while back, and they had no idea what happened to him. They started piecing it all together and looked into what potentially went wrong. They then realized that Jim had tried to blackmail the wrong people, and it 
hadn't gone so great for him. The murderers then killed Jim and disposed of his body, but kept the arm because they knew that the tattoo would be able to lead people to the conclusion that it was Jim. They anchored this arm down and threw it in the water, not suspecting that a tiger shark would eat it and then later be caught by a fisherman. Eventually, the police tracked down the killers and brought them to justice, and it was all because these two fishermen fished up a tiger shark that just happened to eat some pretty important evidence. Number four on this list is the Chimera Lobster. Catching a lobster isn't really that impressive, but what if you caught a lobster that looked as if it came straight from another dimension? A little bit more mysterious if you ask me. Cracked writes, when Alan Robinson headed out to sea in Bar Harbor, Maine in July of 2006, he, like all commercial fishermen, was hoping for a little luck. What he hauled into his boat that day was a 1 in 50 million discovery. It looks like a fish torture delicacy, but it's actually a natural phenomenon. Well, if you consider something that happens practically never a natural phenomenon. A chimera occurs when two zygotes with different cells, and sometimes from different species, combine together to form a single creature or person. Yeah, there have been human chimeras who are the genetic equivalent of having non-identical twins in one body. Unfortunately, the human versions are far less dramatic looking than what you might expect based on the lobster. We're talking legend Legendary Pokemon levels of rare here, guys. Like, this lobster is something seriously special. And just look at that thing. It's split directly down the middle. One half looks cooked and ready to serve, and the other half looks like a regular everyday lobster. This is just one way that this phenomenon can appear. There have been reports where lobsters can come out as blue before, or even harlequin. It's a very mysterious event when it happens, and one of the rarest on the entire planet. Number three in this list is the one-eyed shark. So before we even get into this entry, let's pull up a picture of what I'm talking about so you guys can see. This is the shark that I'm talking about, and it looks pretty fake, right? Well, that's that's exactly what the internet came out and said, but it turns out that this one-eyed freak of a shark thing might actually be legit. Let's pull up a few of the later shots of this shark and see how you guys feel now. Cracked talks about these other pictures and says, in these later shots, some time has passed and the creature is noticeably a little worse for wear in comparison to the originals. The gentleman in the pictures above is Dr. Philippe Galvin, one of Mexico's most renowned shark researchers. While it was reported by Pisces Fleet that Dr. Galvin had seen studied and produced an initial paper on this otherworldly animal and was awaiting review and publication, skeptics still voiced their disdain, complaining now that the shark had to be a creation of special effects artists and that it didn't have gill slits. But the skeptics were soon put to bed because apparently when a pregnant bull shark was recently caught by a commercial fisherman in the Sea of Cortez, the albino cyclop shark was one of the unborn fetuses found inside. Pretty crazy stuff if you ask me guys. Also kind of creepy that the one-eyed shark is just an unborn fetus? I guess nature really do just be like that sometimes. Number two on this list is a skull. Finding body parts in the ocean, or actually anywhere in the world, has got to be pretty jarring. I'd imagine that probably the most jarring of those body parts, though, would be a human skull. Reeling that up on your fishing line when you're expecting to catch some rainbow trout has got to be quite the shock. Well, this case is actually way worse than that. Imagine going fishing, fishing up a human skull, and then having that human skull literally be the skull of one of your former best friends. Yeah, that's right guys. What I just described there is exactly what went down to Barry Hunter in 2007. He found the skull of Brian Allison, someone who had gone missing several years prior, and someone who Barry would often go drinking with. The commercial trawler, the Jan Denise II, was found at the bottom of the ocean several years prior. Brian Allison Allison was on that boat and it was assumed that he perished when the ship went down, but his body, it was never recovered. His family, ever since that ship had gone down, were truly in a horrible place mentally. They inherently understood that Ryan had most likely died at the bottom of the ocean, but without ever receiving confirmation, it truly left them in this horrible gray area that they could never escape. This finding from Barry finally gave them the closure that they needed to move on with their lives. 
still, it must have been absolutely horrifying for Barry, who actually found the thing and then later realized who it was. And finally, number one on this list is the ghost ship. This is definitely not something that you and your buddies would want to find if you're out for a relaxing fishing trip. Rocket Geeks writes, Encountering other ships at sea during a fishing trip isn't such a rare occurrence, but what if they're ghost ships with their occupants still on board? In 2016, two fishermen noticed a strange vessel drifting about 50 miles away from the Philippines. Disturbed by the ship's appearance, they decided to board it to see if anyone was on it. What they found was the decomposing body of German explorer Fritz Bahorhat, who was last seen in 2009, which had been almost perfectly preserved by the salty air and dry winds. What's crazy to me is that this guy's ship was able to just drift through the ocean for so long without being spotted at all. Apparently after doing an autopsy on Fritz, he had died on his boat of a heart attack years ago. His boat obviously wasn't anchored or anything when he died, so the wind and the water just took it. During that entire time, it never capsized or hit land. It was just floating in the water for years, letting his body mummify completely. I think this story, more than any that we've looked at today, is just a perfect example at how massive the ocean can be. For years, an entire yacht carrying a dead human being was just going around without anyone seeing it. Who knows how far this boat had traveled during that time or what it had seen. It also begs the question, how many more of these boats are out there right now? Now just floating around. The ocean is a scary and massive place, guys. These are just a few of the mysteries we found in it, but I guarantee there are plenty more. Number five, Wolverine fish. Hugh Jackman, if you're watching this and you like scary stuff, this first one's for you, my dude. In 2021, there were more than 200 new species of just freshwater fish discovered alone. Just freshwater. Hopefully in Cistrus Wolverine. Okay, that's a pretty badass name and a badass looking fish. There is no way in hell I'm taking that thing off of a hook with my hands. Are you kidding me? And you wouldn't want to either, cause these fishes have strong lateral curved spikes called undauntus tucked underneath their gills, which at any time they can extend and jab at their prey with these spiky prong like claws, hence the name. For those of you who don't know Wolverine, he's an X-Men with claws. It kinda goes hand in hand here, you know? The wolverine fish is actually a catfish, however, that grows up to only about six or seven inches long. They get their name from both the barbed razor sharp prongs associated with them and the temper and aggression inside of them. Yeah, so like full blown wolverine style anger. Luckily for us, they live in between rocks found so far in the Brazilian river of Rio Zingu in the lower Amazon that I don't think you're gonna swim into any one of these soon. I feel like that's where the scariest fish are, the Amazon. Also, kind of confusing biologists, so many species and names alike, but not alike. Catfish, wolf fish, half wolf, half man, X-Men fish. Like every day there's a new fish. Wolverine fish are only herbivores and graze on algae and detritus tucked away deep under rocks. So the likelihood of you just like stepping on one of these are pretty low. Might scare you away from their home, but they won't eat you. Just don't go flipping over any rocks and reaching underneath murky water in the Amazon. That's all I can say for this one. Number four, alien fish? Well, one magnificent alien fish, Advena magnifica, which translates to magnificent alien, hence the name. No, no, it's not from outer space or anything, don't panic. Technically, it's not even a fish. This sea sponge literally gets its name because it just looks like E.T. Hey, I didn't name it, they did. To be fair, it does look like E.T. the alien, come on. The long neck, the huge head, the big eyes, it's literally perfect. This year, a new sea sponge was discovered officially. Well, plucked back in 2017, but they're sure now that it's a completely new species. Over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean, research team from the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History came upon a mesmerizing seascape. Dr. Chris Ma of the team dubbed the scene, quote, a forest of the weird. The sea sponge rises up from the seafloor to look exactly onto the direction of the current, mouth open, hoping to swallow up some bacteria to eat. That's sick, just an alien sponge sticking their ET heads out, catching the breeze, hoping for some fast food. Doesn't sound like a bad gig. The two holes of the sponge that give it its signature ET eyes appearance are clearly visible on the outside of its head. These holes, technically oscules, serve as openings of which the sponge pumps water out of. The sponge is covered in even tinier pores where the water is drawn into the sponge along with tasty bacteria and other small prey. Just sucked in through small chambers and the water's pumped out through a bunch of canals. 
Christiana Castello Branco, the researcher who found this deep sea gray, explains the importance of this discovery by saying, quote, as all of these organisms are intricately connected, by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth. Uh, yeah, 100% we're all connected. Let's give these little dudes some clean water. How about that, people, all right? No more Mountain Dew bottles just thrown into the lake. Pick it up. Number three, bulldog fish. Catfish, wolverine fish, now bulldog fish. When are we just gonna have a fish fish, you know? The bulldog fish, or the Zanactinus otix. That sounds like a Decepticon, doesn't it? Zanactinus otix? Roll out. Bots, Autobots. <laughs> Never mind. This thing can truly teach a new dog some old tricks. Like, 90 million years old tricks, because our newest discovery is actually a really, really old one. Extinct, extinct, thankfully. You wouldn't want to haul this thing up in your net. The Dino of the Week blog states that some of the longest bulldog fish ever may have once even measured up to six meters long. Uh, yeah, that's like a regular sized shark. The bulldog fish fossils may be quite valuable as well. A fully intact, complete framed specimen sold for about 110,000 at Sotheby's auction house. Is this the reason fish and chips are so expensive nowadays? Like what's going on here? This scary dude roamed the warm shallow waters of the Western Interior Seaway that split America in two halves during the upper Cretaceous period. Distinguished by their heavy bony skull and armed to the tooth with teeth like a nightmare, last year, Andy Moore, a local fisherman, made a discovery while taking part in a fishing competition in Nebraska. When he brought his kayak over to free his line, he first thought that it was a skeleton of something that had recently died, so he just returned back to his tournament. He contacted the sheriff's department after the tournament, worried, and they got back to him saying it was his lucky day. Dude, imagine just reeling in a 90 million year old fish during a fishing tournament. Like, I hope he won. That's definitely first place, isn't it? Oh, Andy? Oh yeah, caught a 90 millioner, yeah. Number two, the barrel eye fish. Tubular eyes, bro. No, seriously, your tubular eyes actually are very rare and also significantly puzzling. Say hello to the barrel eye fish or the Macropinna microstoma from the Opus thoproctus species, meaning backwards in Greek, to signify their uniquely designed flipped up eyes luminously inside alive in their head, or backwards. Generally directed upwards and back to detect the silhouettes of both predator and prey, although they can move their eyes back to forward. And basically, they have a sunroof above their head that they can look up from inside their own head. Hey, that's pretty tubular, bruh. They can be found deep in tropical waters in the twilight zone, between 600 and 800 meters down. There are fish that gaze upwards through their transparent heads with eyes like mesmerizing emerald orbs. These domes are huge spherical lenses that sit on a pair of long silvery eye tubes, hence its common name. The barrel eye fish has a green tint over their eyes, which even acts as kind of like a sunglasses to help them track down prey in any sort of lighting. There is literally nowhere to hide, even for a bioluminescent fish. Barrel eyes are one step ahead the entire time. After years of only seeing dead, net caught specimens, in 2021, Bruce Robinson with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California and their high def cameras finally got a pretty good look at these dudes using remotely operated vehicles. Dude, these are apparently really rare. Side note, is this how fish are evolving? Like their heads are becoming see-through all of a sudden? Cause this is terrifying. Like imagine a shark with a sunroof. Number one, the snapping shrimp. This little guy, the snapping shrimp, AKA the pistol shrimp, AKA muscle in the alpha die family. It sounds like a mafia family, doesn't it? Hey, I'm a pistol shrimp with the alpha die family. Who's asking? This little thing. This little thing can literally create a sonic boom under the water right before and as it's attacking you. That's not scary at all. It's so fast you literally don't even know what's happening due to the stun alone and how fast it is. You won't see it coming. You might hear it coming. This thing's sound is that big, it creates a sonic boom. We know nothing, Jon Snow. Like, they're apparently found in coral reefs and oyster reefs. These pistol shrimp hit their prey at over 100 kilometers per hour. In doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because of this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jab, the following pop is around 200 decibels. It has a punching hand and a claw hand, like a jab and a cross. The sound stuns their prey first and resembles sticks breaking or cracking of a knuckle under the water. But don't panic, not in any lakes or freshwater, they live in tropical seas. They're usually muddy green or orange in color, usually only about that big. Scientists found that actual light is produced when the bubble pops due to the high temperature and pressure under the water. 
They're the only ones so far that can do this. I mean, this is pretty sick and also pretty terrifying. The knowledge that fish are starting to learn how to flashbang other fish, like they're clearing a room in Call of Duty. Dude, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going swimming anymore at all. Number five, the Kraken. Over the port side, boys, there she blows. Butter down the hatches, the Kraken's there. I'm sorry, I absolutely could not resist. I'm just trying to paint you a picture of the scene here. The Kraken is an absolutely legendary sea monster, harking back to old sailor's tales from the 17th century. It started as an old Nordic legend and was said to haunt the waters from Norway through Iceland. But as its legend grew, stories of the Kraken would be passed throughout the world, carrying on from sea to shining sea. It's widely theorized that the legend of the Kraken began with sightings of the colossal squid, a creature almost as mythical as the Kraken itself. An old fisherman's tale, it's depicted as a colossal cephalopod capable of crushing a fully stacked galleon with its tentacles and bringing it down to the ocean floor. If the tentacles and its heaving beak aren't enough, it also creates whirlpools around it as it drags your doomed ship down with it all the way down to Davy Jones' locker. The Kraken probably has one of the best PR agents in the sea monster community, being the subject of stories, songs for centuries, finding its way into numerous movies, a career making role in Clash of the Titans, a very strong supporting role in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise really helped elevate it to stardom, even finding its way into a bunch of video games over the years, serving as a boss for players in God of War, Sea of Thieves, and for the real OGs out there, RuneScape as well. When it comes down to who could defeat who, it's not even a question. The Megalodon wouldn't get so much as 30 seconds with the Kraken. The Kraken of lore was crushing ships in seconds. You think it's even gonna notice crushing a shark? Number four, the Loch Ness Monster. Now the Loch Ness Monster is probably the most famous sea creature of all time, and probably one of the most famous Scottish things of all time, alongside William Wallace, Kilts, and Haggis. It's also one of the world's oldest recurring cryptid stories, with the first reports of Nessie, going all the way back to the year 565. And since then, Nessie has delighted cryptozoologists the world over, becoming a cultural icon for Scotland and the Loch Ness as a whole. There's been several, several concentrated efforts to really find the Loch Ness Monster over the years. And while nothing has ever officially shown up on a sonar or a radar, that has never stopped the stream of sightings and photos of the Loch's gentle giant. Nessie seems pretty benevolent. There's never been a story or an allegation of the Loch Ness Monster eating or hurting anyone, usually just sticking its cute little head out of the water for a quick little blurry candid to be discussed and analyzed for years. Let's talk serious for a second here. In the ring, squaring up in a 1v1, I've absolutely got Nessie over the Megalodon, easy. That long neck is gonna wrap around the Meg, get that thing lassoed. You know, the Meg is big, sure. But the Loch Ness Monster clearly has some stealth capabilities. I mean, it's been eluding capture for the better part of 1,500 years, so I've got to imagine that Nessie's got to know some pretty good tricks for hiding. But more so than anything, Nessie's got the people of Scotland riding for them. You're not just messing with a sea creature megalodon, you're messing with a beloved cultural icon. It would be like going to war against raccoons in Toronto. The people just won't stand for it. Number three, Umbozu, translating to sea priest, is a yokai appearing in Japanese folklore. It's depicted as a large, shadowy figure looming out of the water, appearing to sailors, breaking the ship as it rises, and demanding a bucket from whatever unlucky sailor happens to cross its path. Maybe it's got a leak in the roof. There's some differing opinions onto what the origin of the Umubozu is, as there's no specific origin to its legacy or one tale we can point towards. But it's generally agreed that the origin is that they are the spirits of priests who were thrown into the ocean by villagers for one reason or another, and because these priests have had nowhere to lay their bodies to rest, their spirits inhabit the ocean and take the form of a dark specter, haunting and taking retribution on unfortunate souls in the waters. I'd never heard about this creature until researching it for this video, and I've got to say it has got some fantastic folklore. You really should do yourself a favor and look up Umabozu after. The Umabozu rising from the sea and asking if you've got a bucket for it is hilarious. Like it's more of an annoying roommate than a sea monster asking if it can borrow something. Folklore says the Umabozu would cling onto the hull of the ship and shriek at the sailors, sinking them down. The Umabozu's weakness? The smell of smoke, apparently. So if you're looking to get rid of one, light some sage up, I guess, or light something. I'm sure that's very easy to do when you're on a wooden boat in the water. Now, squaring up against the Megalodon, this one, I actually do feel like it could go either way. The Megalodon, giant shark, Umabozu, scary specter, 
but I am going to give the edge to Umabozu solely because I don't know if it's got an actual tangible physical form or if it's just a shadow monster. You know, Megalodon can't really bite through shadows, I don't think. I don't think that's one of its powers. As well, I could really see Umabozu pulling that little trick, you know, hanging on to the side of the Meg, asking for a bucket, and then the Megalodon, who presumably doesn't speak any languages, not understanding what's happening, gets dragged down to the bottom of the sea, never to be seen again. Number 2. Skyla and Carabitus Skyla and Carabitus are sort of like a wrestling tag team duo as far as mythical sea monsters go. They worked in tandem, hounding opposite sides of a narrow strait of water, and famously clashed with the Argo Odysseus, made famous in Homer's Odyssey. The first beast, Skyla, was described to be a dragon-like creature, having 12 feet six long necks, and atop each neck was a head full of razor-sharp teeth. Sailors unlucky enough to pass through Skyla's territory were swooped from their vessel and swallowed whole before they'd even know what would happen. That doesn't sound so bad, you know, all in an instant. There's some speculation that perhaps the original Skyla was a very dramatized account of sailing through an underwater reef, which would definitely provide some explanation as to why a writhing mass of limbs and teeth would be shredding through a ship's hull. But Skyla is only one half of this dynamic duo, the Robin to Batman, and the other half is Carabitus. Carabitus is a little harder to describe, as it has no agreed appearance. In the original myth, the Odyssey, Carabitus presents itself as a whirlpool, savagely swirling around, creating the tides and pulling passing ships into their doom. Maybe it's just a little camera shy and it lets its more Handsome sibling, take a lot of the front facing business. However, of the two, it could be argued that Carabitus was the more dangerous of the two, as during the Odyssey, Odysseus chose to sail his ship closer to Skyla than Carabitus, figuring that it was wiser to lose six men to lose the entire ship. Very wise guy. Now, the Megalodon. Drop out of this one before you even try. A one on one is one thing, but a duo battle against a whirlpool and a six headed dragon? Save yourself the embarrassment and just clock out and go home. Number 1. Jormagander Jormagander is another old Nordic sea legend, also known as the Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent, and is a serpent so large that its tail would surround the circumference of the earth and all its oceans and loop back around onto itself inside its mouth creating an Ouroboros. This impressive girth is where the creature gets its name, World Serpent. Jormagander's also had a bit of a star-studded run in pop culture, appearing in Marvel Comics and most recently the new God of War based around Nordic legends. Jormagander is fairly central to Nordic mythology, as it was said that when the creature would stop biting its own tail and release it from its jaws, it would be one of the signs of Ragnarok, and the creature would thrash its tail and the seas would rise up and flood Midgard, the Nordic term for their realm. There are several notable myths detailing Thor's many encounters with Jormagander, and his various attempts to overpower the beast and to slay the mighty serpent, although as the myths go, he was never quite successful. Good for me, because I actually don't think I would do too great in Ragnarok. I'm really not much of a fighter, and I don't think I would do well wrestling any Vikings. It's said that when Ragnarok occurs, Thor will slay the mighty serpent, only to find himself defeated by poison from the creature himself. All of this to say is that as far as sea monsters go, there could not possibly be anyone more powerful in lore than Jormagander. All this beast has to do to initiate the end of the world is to take its tail out of its mouth. The Megalodon wouldn't be able to challenge this thing. It would literally be over before it began. The Jormagander opens its mouth to start the duel, and that's it. It's done. Not only is the Megalon done, but everything's done. Seas flooding, fires raining down from the heavens. How could there possibly be a more powerful sea monster than this? Unless they update the Nordic myths at all, I doubt anything will ever top the legend of the Jormagander. Number 5. The Frilled Shark Clamidos Lacus Ingenius and Clamidos Lacus Africana, or better known as the Frilled Shark and the Frilled South African Shark, are the two extinct species of shark that swam our oceans. Thank gosh. Well, actually, still kind of do. Eh. The frilled shark is considered a living fossil. Not just its age and time spent surfing the coast, due to its primitive eel-like physical trait, the brown color, the jaws, eight foot body, and the way its fins, spine, and head move under the water are common in ancient serpents and water creatures. So this thing is like an eel-serpent-shark hybrid. Yeah, little jarring. Commonly referred to simply as the frilled shark because of its six pairs of gill slits at its throat. It swims amongst the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans, usually in deep dark murky waters of the outer continental shelf and upper continental slope. These deep dive sharks usually live and sleep near the ocean floor. Okay, that's that's a good sign, of course. They live on a diet of cephalopods, smaller sharks, and even swim to the surface at night to feed what's floating atop on the surface. When hunting, the frilled shark moves like an eel, bending 
writhing and slithering to swallow prey with its long and flexible jaws, which are equipped with 300 rows of recurved needle-like teeth. So am I just gonna like snorkel into one of these things any day now? Well, good thing is they're really hard to find. Like, really hard. Usually caught by accident in commercial fishing nets, usually at depths anywhere between 50 and 1,000 meters. So unless you're free diving at night, you should be okay. Yeah, they like it deep and dark. I'd say these things are already scarier than the Meg. It's like a shark, but an eel-snake hybrid with a shark head and shark size teeth. That sounds a bit scarier. Well, I mean, the Meg preferred warmer, shallower water, so maybe this one's a tie. I don't know who's snorkeling two miles deep, but it's certainly not me, okay? In my opinion, I'd take a large great white over this dinosaur-looking thing slithering after me any day. Number four, the fang-toothed fish. Ah yes, the Anoplogaster cornuta, or commonly known as the fang tooth. I wonder why. Though they spend most of their time in the deep, deep, common fang tooths are known to migrate towards the surface at night. Sorry, the fang tooths are known to migrate towards the surface at night. That is the scariest sentence I've ever said. Dude, these are way scarier than this giant ancient shark. Like all the scariest things come out at night. You notice that? And root canals, but they're usually done during the day. The word megalodon is Greek words meaning giant tooth. I'd take big teeth over this thing chasing me around any day. Thankfully though, this guy is only about a foot in length. Okay, that's not so bad. The fish has a mouth that are full of long snake teeth, perfect for hanging on to its prey as they shake. The lockable jaws ensure that, although thrashing may occur, the fang tooth's teeth are locked clamps that effortlessly swim with dinner in its mouth, just getting dragged deeper and deeper down, wiggling and can't move, trying to run for their lives. Well, swim for their lives. And fish of any size. I'm sorry? Yep any size. Common fang tooths have been recorded at depths of about 5,000 meters, so whatever lives down there, it's game on. Look at this thing. I was scared of sunfish and seaweed brushing up against my legs. This thing swimming by me? This thing? It looks like a night terror in itself, stalking their preferred prey of crustaceans and of course, other fish is the same size. Common fang tooths are more active than many other deep sea fish and seek out food for meal and sport rather than being purely ambush predators eating when they're hungry. That's terrifying. Packing up for the long winter, huh? Their huge mouth and very long teeth ensure that they are able to attack prey and actually hold on while they relocate them to a deeper, darker spot where they can kind of take their time on the meal. I've swam with sharks. In my opinion, this thing's way scarier. Like, eating small critters running around the ocean floor, sure, but also imagine eating something the same size of itself with teeth, no problem. Slowly devouring it bite by bite, yeah, that's way scarier, come on. Just reattaching itself every bite, taking you along for the free ride. Yeah, that's, that's, that's horrifying. And number three, the big fin squid. Of the genus Magnapinidae family, the big fin squid, or as I like to call it, this ocean alien with shoulders, belongs to a group of rarely seen cephalopods with a distinctive morphology, meaning they're really, really weird and rare. Magnapinidae, meaning big fin, of course. The first record of us catching and looking at this family comes from a specimen talismani caught off the Azores in 1907. This was our first look at this bizarre fish, but due to the damaged nature of the find, little information could be extracted and was classified just as a squid. The problem is when you pull these things out of its atmosphere, it just looks like a piece of wet crinoline dress all of a sudden. Don't get the whole terrifying effect, you know? In 1956, a similar squid was caught in the South Atlantic, but during the 80s, two specimens were found in the Atlantic, then three more were found in the Pacific, and eventually the creatures found a place amongst the books as its own species, entering the family Magnapinidae. Squids. Okay, so it's not actually a squid, but loosely related. Like a third cousin of maybe alien origin. This thing looks like it crashed here on an asteroid. I'm just gonna say it, doesn't it? Like there's only 12 of these, not many. The arms and tentacles are the same length. The appendages are also huge and held perpendicular to the body, creating the appearance of a illusion of arms and elbows, giving its trademark alien figure. Most remarkable is the length of the elastic tentacles, which has been estimated around 20 to 30 times its mass and length. Deep sea video evidence puts the total length of the largest specimens at 10 meters long. Yeah, that's two trucks. Close-ups of the body and head show us that the fins are extremely large, being proportionately nearly as big as those of a big fin squid. Hence, the comparison. While they do appear similar, no specimens or samples of the adults have been taken out of the water yet, leaving their exact identity, bodily functions, and internal organs a mystery. Awesome. 
Yes, more mysteries under the water. All right, I only had uh, really bad night terrors already. Let's just add this in there. Yeah, I'd take a shark swimming with a brain at me rather than this alien thing swimming up to me and just staring at me, trying to understand me for about an hour. Terrifying. Number two, the gulper eel. Uripharynx pelicanoides. The pelican eel, or what I just said, is basically a deep sea eel, like deep, deep sea. If you've seen the Ridley Scott's Alien film franchise or the Predator universe, you'll know that this thing looks exactly like that. Yeah, am I wrong? But instead of like eight feet tall, it's only three feet tall. Yeah, still terrifying. The pelican eel has been described by many synonyms, yet nobody has been able to demonstrate that more than one species of pelican eel exists. Riding solo, huh? That's creepy. One of a kind kind of deal. It's also commonly known as the gulper eel, or umbrella mouth gulper eel, due to its terrifying size and function of its mouth. The mouth and jaws resemble a pelican's gulp, hence the name. The morphology of the pelican eel can be difficult to describe because they're so fragile and oddly shaped that they become damaged when they're pulled out of the deep sea's immense pressure. We can't just swim all the way down there and take pictures, you know? The pelican eel's most notable feature, its mouth, which is much, much larger than its body, like five times the size. The mouth is loosely hinged and can be opened wide enough to swallow a fish three times its size. This thing has like a lower mandible of a python, just like unhinging it before dinner. The lower jaw is hinged at the base of the head with no body mass behind it, making the head look abysmally huge. It's basically a swimming mouth with a spine, tail, and I think a brain? Yeah, we don't really know yet. With dot-sized eyes, yeah. It usually is always moving too, rarely stationary. It hunts in some sort of folded state. The pelican the eel's mouth has the capability to change to an inflated shape when hunting, giving the mouth its notably massive appearance. Dude, the mouth unfolds like the James Webb telescope. Like a hundred working parts. Technically, it's like a geometric shape unfolding as a mouth, followed by stretching, like a cootie catcher. Remember those? This thing eats like a cootie catcher. When the pelican eel is in pursuit of its prey, it slowly starts unfolding itself. Imagine this thing's trucking behind you, unhinging its jaw, slowly the closer it gets. The head and jaw structure unfold and spread horizontally, not vertically. Okay, that's scarier all of a sudden. The unspreading event, or as I like to call it, lunch, is followed by the inflation of the mouth from a stretchable skin of the head, which it feeds on prey. Then, water's expelled via the gills. Okay, so it's basically a large strainer, and after it eats, it blows itself out, releases all the water back into the water. Just wrings itself out. Come on, this thing is horrifying. Thank gosh it only eats crustaceans and creepy little crawlies on the bottom seafloor. And number one, the phantom jellyfish. Stygio medusa gigantea. I love that word. Commonly known as the giant phantom jellyfish, is a part of the monotypic genus of deep sea jellyfish. Stygio medusa. With only around 110 sightings in 110 years, it's a jellyfish that is rarely seen. Well, I guess like once a year. I don't know, I'm not really good at math. Believed to be widespread throughout the world, it thrives in all oceans and seas, with the exception of the Arctic Ocean. Yeah, a little too cold for it. The Monterey Bay Aquarium remotely operated underwater vehicles have only sighted the beast 27 times in 27 years. Dude, what's with all the matching numbers? Is this a CIA run? A study conducted by the Journal of the Marine Biological Association of the UK revealed info regarding the species and had this to say. The Gigantia is thought to be one of the largest invertebrate predators on this planet. Planet. One more time, please. The largest predator. It is commonly found in the ocean's midnight zone, reaching depths of about 7,000 meters. Deepest human free dive is about 300 meters. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're good. Unless you have a wide lung span. The largest predators in the deep sea, the giant phantom jellyfish's typical prey consists of plankton and small fish. The S. gigantia tends to be dominant in locations with a low productivity system, meaning it deters other predators of fish, like it likes it quiet. A shy eater, I'd say. However, when this thing is hungry, it battles squids, eels, and even whales. Okay, never mind. Just when I thought this thing was really cute, it fights off whales for food. The first specimen weighing in at 100 pounds was collected in 1899, but it wasn't recognized as its own species until 1959. Imagine this thing chasing you and catching you, tangling you in like 100 feet of netting tentacles so it can just eat you slowly. Does this thing have a consciousness? Like, you can kind of tell if a shark is swimming near or close to you or what it's kind of feeling. This thing's just slowly, softly swimming towards you before it ingests you. Way scarier. 
Like I'm convinced these landed here. The oceans are way scarier than things on land. We haven't even started to uncover the whole ecosystem yet. Coming in at number five, we have the striped surgeon fish. This fish is beautiful to look at, but beware to never cross paths with this creature. This species reaches about 38 centimeters in length and weighs only a little over a pound. Much of the body has black edged blue and yellow stripes and the top of its head is striped with yellow. These fish have sharp forward pointing spikes on its spine and are extremely poisonous and are often referred to as knives. Along with the scary nicknames this creature has, it actually gets its name Surgeon because of its sharp angular scalpel like tail and is sharp enough to easily cut you. These fish are very territorial with a large male defending a feeding territory and a haram of females. The adults may also school and they gather during spawning. The fish eats mostly crustaceans and algae. It's so aggressive that it might try and corner or bully members of its own species to get the best resources. Not only are they aggressive with their own species, but they display the same behavior to fish outside of their species. The surgeon fish is a fast swimmer that can swim up to 25 miles per hour and can live up to a whopping 20 years. These scary creatures dwell in the shallow parts of the ocean where the reef crests are located and often found in tropical oceans like the Indo-Pacific Ocean and Northern Great Barrier Reef. So if you're going to be swimming in the tropical oceans on vacation, be very careful of this creature. Don't be fooled by its beauty and stay far away because it will defend itself and its spawn at all costs and can infect you with its venom. Scientists believe that the world seas hold around 1200 of these different venomous fish species and that they injure an estimated 50,000 people per year so beware and stay away from the striped surgeon fish. In at number four we have sea slugs. These are again a beautiful creature to look at but you will need to stay far away from them. Sea slugs have an enormous variation in body shape, color and size. Most of them tend to be partially translucent and they're often bright colors imply that these animals are under constant threat of predators. But the color can serve as a warning to other animals of the sea slugs toxic stinging cells or offensive taste. Some sea slugs eat prey that contains poison or venom and instead of killing the prey, these slugs store the poison and release at predators for its own protection. Another disturbing fact about the sea slug is that they are cannibals. They are known to eat each other. They may eat a dead sea slug or attack a live one to eat it. Not only do they feed off their own, these creatures also eat plankton, algae and jellyfish. These animals also have both male and female sex organs and they can lay mass amounts of eggs, sometimes up to 1 million eggs and these deadly creatures can live up to 4 years. Sea hares, which is a common name for a large group of herbivores, sea slugs and the largest of the sea hares is the California black sea hare which are naturally toxic and they can inject a foul ink or secrete a vicious slime to deter predators. One type of sea slug in particular, the grey side guild sea slug has been linked to canine deaths and beachgoers are warned to keep their children and pets close by to avoid accidental ingestion or contact. There are so many types of sea slugs and most of them are extremely dangerous so if you see a pretty looking glob near the shore or while swimming, avoid it at all costs. In at number 3 we have the puffer fish. There are more than 120 different species of puffer fish worldwide and are mostly found in tropical and subtropical ocean waters. They can range in size from 1 inch long dwarf dwarf puffer to the freshwater giant puffer which can grow to more than 2 feet in length. These creatures are scaleless fish and usually have rough to spiky skin. All have 4 teeth that are fused together in a beak like form. Puffer fish tend to mostly feed on invertebrates and algae while larger puffers will even crack open and eat clams, mussels and shellfish with their hard beaks. Poisonous puffers are believed to synthesize their deadly toxin from the bacteria in the animals they eat. Due to their slow and clumsy swimming style makes puffers very vulnerable to predators. When they feel threatened or notice a predator, they will use their highly elastic stomachs and the ability to quickly ingest huge amounts of water to turn themselves into a virtually inedible ball several times their normal size. Almost all puffer fish contain tetrodotoxin, a substance that makes them foul tasting and often lethal to fish. To humans, these creatures are extremely toxic and deadly. They are up to 1200 times more poisonous than cyanide. There is enough 
toxin in one puffer fish to kill 20 adult humans, and there is no known antidote. This toxin is secreted across their body, making puffers dangerous to touch and even more dangerous to consume. Surprisingly, the meat of some puffer fish is considered a delicacy called fuju in Japan. It is extremely expensive and can only be prepared by trained, licensed chefs who know how to prepare it properly, because one bad cut means almost certain death for a customer. Many such chefs occur annually because of poor preparation. In at number two, we have Kandiru. This fish is something out of a nightmare. This creature has many scary nicknames such as the toothpick fish or vampire fish. These fish tend to be small, only growing to about 7 inches, but others can grow larger around 16 inches. Their heads are small with short sensory barbels around it, backward pointing spines on the gill covers, and their bodies are translucent and make it difficult to spot these creatures. They tend to reside in the Amazon, so if you're planning a trip, beware of these creepy creatures if you're going for a quick dip. Not many humans have been attacked, which is good, but those that have, it's been deadly. This scary creature feeds on blood and has been found feeding on the urethras of swimmers. Once it penetrates its victims, it can cause inflammation, hemorrhaging, and even death. The earliest report of the Kandiru attacking a human was in 1829, then again in 1855, and local Araguay fishermen stated that it is dangerous to urinate in the water as the fish springs out of the water and penetrates into the urethra by ascending the length of the liquid column. The most recent attack of a Kandiru to a human was in 1997 in Brazil. A 23 year old man was urinating while thigh deep in the water when he claimed the creature jumped from the water into his urethra. The victim underwent a two hour surgery to remove the fish from its body. Many speculate that these fish are attracted by the odor of the urine in the water, and that's what makes them attack, but others think these creatures hunt by sight and have no attraction to the urine at all. I think this creature might be the most terrifying of all sea creatures because instead of just stinging or biting you, this creature actually inserts himself inside the human body and wreaks havoc. And finally, in number one, we have Du Bois Sea Snake slash beaked sea snake. There are more than 50 species of sea snakes, but the deadliest are the Du Bois sea snake and the beaked sea snake. These venomous snakes reside in many regions of Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, and are common throughout the Indo-Pacific. They live in coral reef flats, sandy and silty sediments which contain seaweed, invertebrates, and coral or sponges that can serve as shelter to them. These snakes feed on moray eels and various fish that live on the seafloor, up to three and a half feet in size. Their venom affects its prey's ability to contract the muscles and makes the prey flaccid to make it easier for the snakes to eat. The Du Bois sea snake is the most venomous sea snakes and one of the top three in the world. These snakes use their fangs to bite and release their venom to immobilize their prey for their own protection. The toxins in these snakes' venom affects the nervous system and it causes paralyzation of the body's muscles, then causes death due to respiratory failure. The beaked sea snake is responsible for more than 50% of all sea snake bites and each bite contains anywhere from 7.9 to 9 milligrams of venom. A human can die from just 1.5 milligrams. Scientists have estimated that their venom is 4 to 8 times more lethal than that of a cobra. So along with the Du Bois snake, this venomous creature is among the most dangerous and venomous snake in the world. Not only do you have to be worried about venomous snakes on land, but some of the deadliest are in our oceans, so be careful when swimming in warm climates. And be sure to not come in contact with these scary creatures. Coming in at number 5, we we have Titan triggerfish. These fish are known to be quite aggressive to their prey, and they tend to bite divers who come too close to their nests. These fish are among the largest species of triggerfish, and they are commonly found in lagoons and at reefs deep in the ocean, stretching from Australia to Thailand. Their diet consists of sea urchins, crustaceans, tube worms, and coral. It often feeds by turning over rocks, stirring up sand, and biting off pieces of branching coral. They don't typically feed on other fish, but they've been observed being aggressive and attacking other fish who enter their territory. Along with being aggressive, naturally they get extremely aggressive during the reproduction season when the female is guarding its nest, which is placed in a flat and sandy area, and looks roughly cone-shaped. If you dive down and come in contact with the female fish near her nest, it will defend its eggs at all costs, often exposing its erect dorsal spine and swimming rapidly towards you to attack. It is suggested to swim horizontally away from the danger zone rather than going up 
to the surface right away. Triggerfish can grow up to 30 inches and their size and oval shape make them very recognizable along with their threatening looking teeth and have evolved as an apex predator within their natural habitat. If you're on vacation and are planning to go scuba diving or snorkeling, be careful not to swim near coral reefs because they tend to swim around there and if you get too close they will attack and bite you. The titan triggerfish bites are not venomous, they are extremely painful and can cause serious injury. Coming in at number 4 we have flower urchin. Yes it has a nice name but it is anything but that. It is considered to be the most dangerous urchin in the world. This urchin has flower like patterning and are usually a pinkish white to yellowish white colouring with a central purple dot and that's how it got its beautiful name. They tend to live in coral reefs, seagrass and sandy environments lower down towards the ocean floor and it feeds on algae. Bryozone's an organic detritus and can grow to a maximum diameter of 15 to 20 centimeters. They reside from Japan all the way to Australia and in the Red Sea to the East African coast. Flower urchins are among the numerous species of sea urchins known as collector urchins and they often cover their upper body with debris from their surroundings to camouflage from others. They're usually covered in objects like dead coral fragments, shells, seaweeds and rocks. If you just simply touch this creature it can deliver excruciatingly painful stings that can result in hospitalization. It can cause paralysis of the tongue, lips, eyes and muscles, faintness, difficulty breathing and the inability to speak. A scientist named Tsutomu Fujiwara who was once stung by the flower urchin described feeling like he was going to die. So when in the ocean beware of your surroundings and make sure not to touch this urchin. Another account of someone being stung by these dangerous creatures was the drowning of a pearl diver after being rendered unconscious from accidental contact with a flower urchin. Again if you're going to be swimming, snorkeling or deep sea diving in the ocean be very careful you don't come into contact with these beautiful yet dangerous creatures. Coming in at number 3 we have the blue ringed octopus. This creature is beautiful looking and easily recognizable due to their yellow skin and blue and black rings but it's one of the deadliest species of small octopus in the ocean and scientists have even classified them as one of the world's most dangerous animals. To the eye this creature is beautiful but their blue and black rings around their bodies change dramatically when they become threatened. Despite only being 5 to 8 inches in size their venom is extremely powerful and can be very dangerous to humans if they're provoked. If stung it can result in a number of things such as nausea, respiratory arrest, heart failure, blindness, total body paralysis and can lead to death within a few minutes if not treated or could cause drowning due to the results of the venom and the inability to swim to the surface. In order to come in contact with the creature's venom you would have to come into direct contact with the octopus. When faced with danger the octopus's first instinct is to flee but if the threat persists they will then go into a defensive stance and display its blue rings. If the octopus is cornered or touched the person would be in danger of being bitten and stung by its deadly venom. They are named one of the deadliest sea creatures for a reason because despite them being such a small animal they carry enough venom in their bodies to kill up to 26 humans with just a few minutes. Within just a few minutes. These terrifying sea creatures feed crabs, shrimp and other small animals. They reside in tide pools and coral reefs in the Pacific and Indian oceans from Japan to Australia and their species tend to only live around 2 to 3 years but this may vary based on their nutrition, temperature and intensity of light. Be extremely careful when in the ocean, be sure to watch out for these terrifying creatures. They would be easy to see due to their bright colours but if spotted swim away fast before you get attacked. Coming in at number 2 the box jellyfish. This is a species of jellyfish that usually tops the list of the most dangerous sea creatures in the world and the world's most venomous creature. At first look its appearance isn't too threatening but if stung it is life threatening. The sting can result in death in less than 5 minutes. The most recent death from a box jellyfish sting was in February 2021 to a man who passed away 10 days after being stung while swimming at Cape York Beach in Australia. Before that the last known fatality was in 2007 and total of 79 deaths since the first report in 1883 and that's just in Australia alone. In the Philippines there are far more fatalities with up to 40 deaths annually. In Thailand after a man died in 2014 from a box jellyfish sting they enhanced their first aid stations on beaches but yet the next year two more fatalities occurred due to this deadly sea creature. Unlike some jellyfish the box jellyfish can swim which means they are capable of hunting for prey and can move through the ocean at a very fast pace of up to 8 miles per hour. They actively hunt their prey which tend to be smaller fish and invertebrates including prawns and bait fish. Unfortunately the box jellyfish has many enemies like crabs, different species of turtles, rabbit fish, bat fish and butterfish but their swift swimming and venomous stings help themselves stay alive. An interesting fact about box jellyfish is that in Hawaii the number of box 
jellyfish peak after a full moon, which is apparently when they come near the shore to spawn. So if you're thinking of going for a swim in the ocean during a beautiful full moon, I'd advise to just wait until the next day because you don't want to ruin a nice vacation with a fatal box jellyfish sting. No, no one wants to ruin a vacation by dying. That would suck. And finally, in at number one, we have Cone Snail. Just by looking at this little snail sitting in its shell, you wouldn't think it would be dangerous or harmful at all. Their shells are beautiful looking with colorful and complex patterns on its shell, but don't be fooled, you should never handle this snail. It is one of the most venomous sea snails in the ocean. There are over 600 species of these cone snails all around the world, and they are extremely toxic. The most dangerous species to humans are the slightly larger ones, but pretty much all cone snails are capable of stinging if handled or stepped on and can be very fatal to humans. Cone snails use a hypodermic needle like modified radula tooth and their toxic venom gland is used to attack and paralyze their prey instantly before eating them. The tooth is hollow and barbed and is attached to the tip of the radula inside the snail's throat. When the snail detects an animal nearby that it wants to feed on, it sends a long flexible tube called a proboscis towards their prey and the radula tooth is loaded with their toxic venom from their venom bulb and is fired into the prey by a powerful muscular contraction. It's like gleeking. They tend to be found in all tropical and subtropical seas in deep areas near rocks and coral reefs. These toxic creatures are carnivorous and predatory, and they feed on small bottom dwelling fish, marine worms, and even other cone snails. If you're going to swim in the ocean, you shouldn't really ever come in contact with these venomous creatures due to them living on the ocean floor. But if they ever wash up on the shore, be careful if you're collecting shells from your vacation, and make sure we don't pick up any cone shells just in case there's a snail living inside, because it could be deadly. Only one drop of their venom can kill up to 20 people. So when swimming in the oceans, be careful and watch out for all these deadly creatures. This is why I never go in the ocean. Everything wants to kill you. Coming in at number five, we have Colossal Squid. The Colossal Squid, which is not seen by many humans unless they have washed up on shore, they are considered to be the largest and heaviest squid species in the sea, weighing a total of 1,500 pounds and having a length of 33 feet long, as well as being the most elusive and mysterious creatures of the deep sea. The species were first discovered in 1925 when two Colossal Squid arms were found in a sperm whale stomach. Then in 1981, another one was discovered, and finally in 2003, the colossal squid was collected for further research of this new and crazy species of squid. But to this day, very little is known about this deep sea creature. These squids are also known to have the largest eyes out of the entire animal kingdom, being larger than a human head. Unlike other squid species, have hooks on their arms, which are very muscular and strongly attached to their arms. And it's said these hook like things are used to help the squid hold and immobilize struggling prey. Sounds like a horror movie death to me. Due to them being so far down in the sea, little is known about them and their behaviours, but what is known is that they prey on sperm whales. Yes, these creatures are fearless. They see a massive whale and say that's breakfast, which is terrifying. Only a few have been caught and those couple that have been, have been put on display at the Museum of New Zealand in December 2008. So if you're planning a trip to New Zealand, I would definitely suggest going to see this massive specimen because the likelihood of you coming into contact with this squid while swimming is slim to none, but then again, why would you ever want to get close to this thing while going for a swim? Coming in at number four, we have Atlantic Wolffish. The Atlantic Wolffish comes with a lot of nicknames, otherwise known as the Atlantic Catfish, Sea Cat, Wolf Eel, Ocean Catfish, Sea Wolf, and the most fitting, the Devil Fish. Their blue like appearance makes them stand out from many of the other fish species in the deep sea. Besides their unique appearance, wolffish actually naturally produce antifreeze to keep their blood flowing due to their extreme extremely cold environment. One good thing about these scary creatures is that they help control the crab and sea urchin populations which tend to get out of hand quickly and can have a negative effect on the health of a marine system. They have several fang like teeth in the front followed by three more rows of teeth inside their powerful and crushing jaws. Even their throats are armed with serrated teeth. If that's not terrifying enough, they can grow as long as a fully grown human is tall, so about six feet give or take. Their diets consist of large hermit crabs, starfish, crustaceans, large whelks, and sea urchins. These hideous creatures are known for their quick strikes and even quicker kills because being a part of the deep sea community is a fish eat fish world down there and thankfully we are safe from them up here on land. In fact, the numbers of Atlantic wolffish in the US are actually depleting due to the overfishing and according to the National Marine Fisheries Service, they are currently considered a species of concern. If you're an avid fisher in the Atlantic Ocean, try to steer clear from these creatures and let them do their own thing. Come in at number three. 
every deep sea dragonfish. This is probably one of the ugliest fish I've ever seen, which is why it fits perfectly on this list, and that is the deep sea dragonfish. Sometimes referred to as the scaleless dragonfish, this hideous creature looks like something straight out of a horror movie with its sharp, transparent teeth, slimy skin, and enormous mouth, which can open more than 100 degrees. Even though it's not the biggest creature of the deep sea, that doesn't stop it from eating prey 50 times its size, and that is beyond scary. This creature's teeth are stronger than the teeth of some of the fiercest fish predators, like piranhas and even great white sharks. The dragonfish is a ferocious predator and can actually produce its own light through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. But when he's not hunting prey, he can easily disappear into the darkness of the deep sea and lurk in his habitat, 1600 feet under the surface of the ocean. The deep sea is the darkest and deepest corner of the ocean. With crushing pressure and lack of oxygen and light, it makes it extremely difficult for anything to survive down there. Thankfully, this predator is deep, deep, deep down in the ocean, and hopefully, none of us will ever come in contact with this hideous water monster. Coming in at number two, we have Frilled Shark. The frilled shark is often called the living fossil due to its appearance, looking like a massive prehistoric eel. They have a dark brown exterior and are almost seven feet long. These creatures are terrifying due to their 40 rows of curved, razor sharp teeth, which is a total of about 300 teeth. First discovered in 1876 by zoologist Ludwig Dodelin, who classified this creature as a discrete species of shark, and a few years later, after much research, it was later named its own species in the shark family. Given a name, because of its frilly looking gills, and today there are two different types of species of the frilled shark. Regardless of how many species there are, I don't want to come in contact with any of them. This creature tends to live in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and don't tend to come into contact with humans, but a handful of times they have been accidentally caught by commercial fishermen. Thankfully, you probably will never come into contact with this terrifying creature because the closest they've come to the ocean surface is 390 feet deep, but typically they reside more than three times times that depth. They live very close to the ocean floor and survive off of cephalopods, bony fish, and smaller sharks. When hunting for food, these creatures move similar to an eel, lunging and bending to capture their prey and continue to swallow them whole with their long and flexible jaws and of course their massive amounts of teeth. Due to the creatures living in the deep sea, they are rarely seen and for good reasons, but there was rare footage that came out in 2007 of one. If you're not too scared, you can go check it out after this video. And finally, in at number one, we have stonefish. They are known to live in the tropics. Tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans, and these deep sea creatures have perfect camouflage to look like a rock on the floor of a coral reef. So even if you somehow were around one, you probably wouldn't even notice it was a fish. They are close relatives to the scorpion fishes and consume other reef fishes and some seafloor invertebrates. They don't actively hunt their prey, they just wait for their prey to come to them, waiting hours at a time. And when their potential target is less than their body length away, they will strike. They have some of the most powerful jaws and very large mouths that create so much pressure they are able to easily trap their unsuspecting prey and swallow them whole. This creature is the most venomous fish in the world. It's 13 spines along its back that can release the venom, and this can kill a human within a few hours. They have a potent neurotoxin secreted from glands at the base of their needle-like dorsal fin spines, which they stick up when disturbed or threatened. The more venom that is injected into you, the worse it will be. Their stings cause terrible pain, swelling, necrosis, and then of course death. These horrifying creatures are actually considered a delicacy in many parts of Asia, such as Japan and China. They are usually cooked ginger and put into a clear soup, but could also be served raw as sashimi. As long as they're prepared correctly and their dorsal fins are removed, they are a dense and sweet snack and considered by many to be good for your health. If you're swimming in the ocean, you thankfully won't come in contact with this killer fish creature because they live on the ocean floor, so you won't have to worry. But if you're curious about the stonefish, you can check out more about it on the show River Monsters. They did an episode in 2017. Even though the stonefish isn't the largest creature in the deep sea, it's their venom that makes them the most terrifying. They don't use their venom to catch prey, but it's quite effective when they are threatened and can turn away even the strongest potential predators. Number 5. 54 Hands In cartoons, you know, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, that kind of thing, they're always fishing out stock garbage, like a fish skeleton or maybe a boot. And I always thought that was pretty funny. You know, imagine pulling up just a totally random thing out of the water. I imagine it's a lot less funny in real life though. 
pulling up severed body parts or 54 severed body parts, you know, kind of like pieces of a terrible puzzle. In 2018, fishermen in the Beshenyenye channel of the Amur River made a horrifying discovery when they fished up a bag containing 54 severed human hands. I think we can all agree that's probably one of the worst things ever that you could probably fish up. That's got to be very low at the bottom. At first they pulled up a single hand and that would have been enough to make this list and then the fishermen shortly pulled up 53 other severed hands in a little sack. <laughs> Someone out there is missing a collection, clearly. Now I don't know a ton about Siberia's wildlife, but severed hands aren't indigenous to Siberia's rivers and lakes, meaning someone put them here. Investigators gave no clues as to who the hands might have belonged to at one point or why they were all discarded in this manner. The hands were wrapped in plastic shoe covers and bandages and police took fingerprints from the hands to see if maybe they could be traced, maybe they could get some back to their owners. Now theories about why 54 severed hands in a bag washed up have unsurprisingly prompted a lot of wild speculation. I mean, really, you can kind of take your pick where you want to go with this. Severed as part of some punishment of a, a crime syndicate, a lone lunatic with a collection, some sort of demonic satanic ritual, or is it something deeply macabre but explainable? Now, a prevailing theory from local police is that the hands came from a medical scenario, and that means amputations, cadavers, students does not nearly begin to explain how 54 of them ended up in a bag and then in the river though and to think they'd probably still be there if it wasn't the right hook at the right time weird thing to think about and if you're looking for way more videos about scary sea creatures they don't all have to be hands we got loads and loads more on the channel we love freaky stuff deep beneath the water so click through Hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss a video, but if you wouldn't mind, do that at the end of this video, because I got four more freaky things found on the fishing lines coming up for you right now. Coming in at that number four spot is this terrifying 16 foot long monstrosity hauled out of the ocean by Chilean fishermen. Shocking those who learned suddenly that fish can be five meters long sometimes. A clip of the oarfish was posted to TikTok where it went viral almost immediately. Little fishy fever swooping up 10 million views. Most people worried this fish might be a bringer of bad times and there might be an inkling of truth to that. The fish is called an oar fish and it's thought to be an omen of impending bad fortune which I understand completely. If I was having a nice day on the water and I pulled this thing out, I would not think that I had been blessed. I would not think that good things were about to happen to me. In Japanese folklore, this fish is sometimes referred to as Ryogo no Tsukai, translating the messenger from the sea god's palace. Linked to the legend of Namazu, a giant sea snake which caused earthquakes whenever it would rise. Now, oarfish live deep, deep, deep in the depths of the sea, really way down there. And there's a theory that they only rise nearer to the surface level whenever there's a disturbance of the tectonic plates. That's the big crust that makes all the earthquakes happen, which would definitely make this fish a bad omen and a bringer of earthquakes, and you understand where the folklore behind it would come from. But Here's something for you. The actual oarfish, terrifying as it looks, is a gentle giant. It's the largest bony fish in the whole world, and it isn't much of a predator, so don't worry about it. It looks like it could swoop you up whole. It's not going to. It prefers to swim around hoovering up plankton. They barely even have teeth, actually. And they don't pose a threat to humans at all, unless you consider scaring the heck out of you a threat. And I hope not, otherwise I'd be threatening you guys every single day Day, twice a day. Number three, basket star. Now whenever I do these videos about the ocean and all manner of strange monstrosities that live beneath the trenches, I feel like I discover all these new species and more often than not, the species I discover are ones that I probably would have been fine not knowing existed on this earth with me. When I find out for even 50 seconds of these things live on earth, oh, Puts the fear of God into me. Makes me understand that I could die. Look, I like ocean creatures fine enough, but whenever we do these videos, I just think about how they feel, and I can't imagine our next creature would feel pleasant. This horrible little bundle of spaghetti is called a basket star. It's a very ugly looking fish. I'm sorry, basket star. I mean not to pass judgment. It's just that you're ugly. Maybe a basket star came up on your TikTok timeline recently when an angler from Singapore caught the strange creature and posted a video of it, gaining viral traction as we all 
all came to gawk at the weird tentacled creature. The angler, one Ramlin same, caught the basket star on one of his usual fishing spots off Pula Ubin. The creature was writhing and wriggling with what looked like more than a hundred wiggly little appendages. Ugh. It just, it, it looks like all the stuff that collects at the bottom of the sink, you know? <laughs> looks like if you put your finger in that, you'd never get it back. I just don't like looking at it. At the time, he thought at first that it was just a bit of seaweed being pushed around by the waves, and when he pulled it up, he thought that possibly the creature was an alien, which I totally get. If I pulled this thing out of the water, I would be calling the FBI. Now, while that would have been pretty cool, it's just this freaky little critter. Now, because they're deep sea creatures, it's rare that humans get to see basket stars up close or study them, which is what made Ramlin's catch all that much more interesting. We actually don't know a ton about these bizarre little creatures. But the other thing that made it so interesting is just because, come on, look at how weird this little pile of noodles is. That exists. That exists on the same planet as you. <laughs> Number two, a giant prehistoric skull. Generally, when you're going fishing, the goal is to catch a fish, maybe even two fish if you're getting wild. So imagine the surprise when you find a prehistoric skull on the end of your line. Raymond McElroy, no relation to the podcast Empire, and his assistant Charlie Coyle were shocked to discover a massive heaving elk skull with a gigantic pair of antlers on the other end of their hook. According to scientists who carbon dated it, the skull dates back nearly 11,000 years. Now, shockingly, the water they were fishing in was only about 20 feet deep when they discovered the elk skull. You'd think someone would have tripped over it in 11,000 years or dug it out by now, but hey, fate works in very mysterious ways that I don't claim to understand or try to. I can try to imagine pulling a giant skull out of the water though. Charlie Coyle was shocked by it saying, I thought it was the devil himself. I was gonna throw it back in. I didn't know what to do with it. At the very least, hanging it up as living room decor, man, above the fireplace, above the mantle, it would go great. Now, the skulls and the antlers of the giant elk once belonged to an extinct ancient species known as the Megaloceros giganteus, and I know I'm gonna end up making a bunch of videos about the Megaloceros the way I did the Megalodon and the Titanoboa, it's entirely possible. This species has been extinct for well, nearly 11,000 years and was one of the largest species of deer to ever trot around the world. How it ended up in a lake in Ireland, get caught by a pair of fishermen, kind of above my pay grade. But hey, I don't solve the mysteries here. I just ask them and speculate blindly. And number one, a ghost shark. Oh. Roman Fedorzov routinely entertains his 600,000 Instagram followers with pictures of all the bizarre monstrosities he pulls out of the sea while sailing around Murmansk. That's a port city in Russia. His Instagram is a treasure trove of scary undersea finds. It's one of my favorite things on my feed, and I absolutely recommend you give him a follow on any of his social media platforms if you're into this sort of thing, as he is the head honcho for it. This video could easily have just been five things he posted on his account. Like I said, this guy is the king of weird stuff in the water. Right here is a fish of many names, sometimes called Frankenstein's fish, due to the stitches all over its body looking like it's like sewn together from all these different fish. It's also been referred to as a rat fish, a ghost shark, a spook fish, <laughs> but officially they're known as ghost chimeras. These things are bad news from teeth to tail. They got a spicy door. They do not have a spicy dorsal fin. They might taste amazing, but I doubt it. I mean, look at the fucking thing. They have a spiny dorsal fin that's poisonous to the touch. It's got a mouth of rat-like teeth that helps it grind down anything it catches, crushing its prey in its jaws. Now, it usually goes after delicious things like crabs and prawn, so the rat teeth help pulverize tough shelves. You're not really supposed to eat the shells, but it's a fish, nobody told it that. It also makes for a very handy nutcracker. Now these little predators also have an inherent ability to detect the electric fields produced by other creatures. I'm just reading fun facts off a Wikipedia page. I wish I even knew the littlest bit about biology because that makes this fish sound magic. I didn't know fish had like electricity. I should have paid attention in school. Too late, now I'm here, now I'm reading YouTube. I could have had a different career. Now, I think as a little treat while I reassess my life and my career path, we ought to have a slideshow of just a bunch of Fedortsov's weirdest catches. We'll do a little lightning round of some freaky sea critters and I'll react to them. We'll have fun. It's gonna be a great way to end the video. We're all gonna laugh. All right, here we go. Ready, ready? Baby, that's, not, that's a face not even Mother Nature could love. I don't mind this one. 
I wouldn't touch it, but I like it. I like it, the cut of its jib. I play cards with this one. Buddy, toss that one back in the water. I don't ever want to see that again. Don't ever put that up on my screen again. I don't ever want to see that.